Welcome to this edition of NC Transportation Now. I'm Mike Charbonneau. While we're all enjoying the nicer, warmer weather and the longer daylight hours, more people out enjoying walking, riding their bikes or their motorcycles. But unfortunately, with more of that traffic on the road comes a greater risk for crashes involving those on bicycles, motorcycles, or out walking. Now, May is National Bike Month and also Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month, and a good time for us to remember that we all share in the responsibility of making the roads safer for everyone. For motorists, this means being extra watchful for others on the road, driving at a slower speed, avoiding distractions, and being prepared to yield to pedestrians and crosswalks. They have the right of way. Also, remember to share the road. Motorcyclists and bicyclists have the right to a full lane. They also can be easily hidden by a car's blind spot, so take an extra moment to thoroughly check traffic when changing lanes. Bicyclists, motorcyclists, and pedestrians also share in the responsibility, so make sure that you're visible at all times. This includes wearing bright or reflective clothing. Also, be predictable and follow all traffic rules and signals. More safety tips and additional safety resources can be found on the Governor's Highway Safety Program website on the screen below. Registered moped owners will soon receive a letter from the Division of Motor Vehicles to remind them that beginning July 1st, they're required to carry liability insurance. The DMV is reaching out to the owners to make sure that they know about the law and that they must provide proof of insurance to their local license plate agency or risk having their license plate revoked. Legislation requiring all mopeds to be registered went into effect on July 1st of 2015. Governor Pat McCrory and Secretary Nick Tennyson were joined by other state and local leaders at the Ferry Division shipyard in Mans Harbor to christen the Dredge Manio, which was named for the Native American chief who played a significant role in North Carolina history when British colonists first arrived on Roanoke Island in the 1580s. The new dredge features state-of-the-art technology, including sensors to measure the amount of material dredged and software to map the dredge location and area to be dredged, as well as being able to dredge up to a depth of 30 feet. Keeping our state-maintained waterways navigable is essential for our economy as well as safety and is part of Governor McCrory's 25-year vision for transportation. The Ferry Division is also gearing up for the busy summer travel season. To better accommodate riders on the popular hatteras Ocracoke Ferry route, the Division will be providing 36 daily departures from each side beginning Tuesday, May 3rd. That's double the number in the off-season. Lines are shortest before 9 a.m., so arrive early to avoid delays. Beginning Tuesday, May 24th, the two other routes serving Ocracoke Island, Swan Quarter and Cedar Island, will also increase their departures. Swan Quarter goes from 3 to 5, and Cedar Island goes from 3 to 4. Reservations are recommended for these longer routes to ensure your desired departure time. For up-to-date schedules for each of the ferry routes, visit the ferry website on the screen below. Well, that's all for this edition of NC Transportation Now. As always, stay connected with us through Facebook and Twitter. That's at NCDOT. And for all of us here at NCDOT, safe travels.